I hope that you are having a great day. Thanks for coming back to the channel. We're gonna talk about three main things in this video. One, why a video was missing last week. Two, all the updates with SB360. Some crazy stuff has been happening with the California Catholic Conference and the Pacific Justice Institute. If you don't remember, those are the guys that opposed it, the attorneys that were hired to oppose the bill in the hearing. Talk about some stuff that's gonna go to Patreon exclusively. And thank you for those who are already stepping up and supporting the Patreon. Every single dime is going back to not only maintaining the channel, but also this activism work. It's a group of grassroots activists. So first up, I didn't post a video last week because one, we had the 2019 Memorial on Friday. So I spent all day preparing for that and mentally getting myself ready because when I go into something like that, it brings, uh, and a lot of XJWs can understand this, it brings back so many mental emotions and flashbacks and nightmares and uh, depression during, after, or um, later. And you'll get to see this footage. I did go to the 2019 Memorial. After that was a full day of work plus editing and uploading all the stuff. And then the next day was another vlog of the DNA test that I did with my family, plus Easter, plus a whole bunch of updates coming from the SB 360 bill with the Catholics and the Pacific Justice Institute attacking and not providing the whole story. It was nuts. I post more on Instagram, so if you're not following me there, you should, at uh, Cameron Fader because I post more there than I do on YouTube. And more and more exclusive updates are just coming exclusively to Patreon about stuff that I can't really talk about here on YouTube because the Jehovah's Witnesses, Pacific Justice Institute, and the California Catholic Conference may be watching. So please support the Patreon and you'll get some more private information that I can talk about more freely there, plus an upcoming AMA. Okay, let's get to it. First thing on the list is the uh, Catholic media lying about SB 360 as well as the Pacific Justice Institute. So Kevin Snyder, if you remember this guy, Madam Chair and members of the committee, good morning. My name is Kevin Snyder uh, with Pacific Justice Institute, a center for public policy where I serve as chief counsel. In my capacity as an attorney, much of my practice is focused on advising religious institutions and their clergy. Of the Pacific Justice Institute was an attorney hired to oppose SB 360, the bill that stops and clarifies the law to make it so clergy class, Jehovah's Witnesses, any kind of religious um, group can't keep hiding child abuse, neglect, or sex abuse under clergy penitent privilege. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below. It's very important that you go watch that. That's a massive thing, and the full version is on Patreon. Then, Andrew Rivas showed up, if you remember this guy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. My name is Andrew Rivas. And I'm the executive director of the California Catholic Conference, and I am here to express the bishop's uh, opposition to the bill and uh, offer myself as a, as a person to talk to as to why we would be opposed to the bill. And let me first start by saying that it is a self-defeating bill, and that's one of the reasons why we oppose it. Sitting next to these guys was very unreal because they, they had no emotions. They wouldn't look at me at all. Um, they were nervous and their hands were shaking, but Andrew Rivas came off as kind of creepy and disgusting because he kept smiling during certain points, even though he had no point and his, his reasoning was just made zero logical sense. 
and Nancy Skinner and Hannah Beth Jackson, the senators, completely destroyed their arguments as they were legally and trying to skew the amendments and the law with their statements. And if you have no idea how the law works or legislation or attorneys, it sounds like they know what they're talking about, but if you really analyze it, they're just being assholes and skewing the law. So uh, we will be going to that into the second. Both the Pacific Justice Institute and Andrew Rivas, the California Co Catholic Con Conference, and, and a lady by sh a name Charlotte Allen. I mean, that could be a dude's name too, but it sounds like a lady from First Things, California. What, what they're doing is the way they're setting the frame is they're, they're misrepresenting just like they did in the hearing what SB 360 is actually doing. And they're saying that it's threatening the seal of confession. First off, this is about child abuse, neglect, and uh, sex abuse, or any kind of a mental, emotional abuse, or physical abuse being hidden or ignored by churches, which they've already done. And we've had um, Hannah Beth Jackson, she pointed out, we've had a plague come through the world by allowing this to happen, by continuing to allow this to happen. We can't anymore, and I think it's worth it to stand up for everybody who's been abused, myself included. What they're doing to confuse their own members, if you grew up as a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or a Scientologist, you're given one side of things. The world is black and white, there's no gray, there's no color, and that's what they're doing with their members. So they've been releasing articles skewing everything and saying that we're attacking the seal of confession, a you know, millennial old, what, thousand year old reign. <laughs> but thousand year reign of tradition. Well. First off, I think most of us can agree, most people who are sane, once they realize what this bill is actually about, is fuck tradition, people should always come first. Is someone who goes forward to an elder, clergy class, priest, uh, someone with some type of power in the church and saying, hey, I have been abused or I think someone has been abused or my, you know, my family member is being abused, I, I've seen it, I've heard it. Uh, please help me. What the churches typically do is use clergy penitent privilege to not report it and then they swipe it under the rug and say not to speak about it and then they let the perpetrator go and then the victim gets victimized into thinking that they shouldn't talk about it in order to not make the religion look bad because Satan or the world is after that religion. Uh, which is unfair and disgusting. But the way these guys are framing it, typically uh, someone doesn't really, most people do not go to their clergy class and say, I'm confessing that I was abused. That makes zero logical sense. When they go to confession or to someone higher up in the church that are looking up to, they're looking for help. Uh, churches very rarely provide therapy, aftercare, protection, which is investigation, reports, and going after the person who's the perpetrator. Now, of course, there's always going to be the cases, which is a much smaller amount where it's just hearsay and that person could be innocent or that my person might be just psycho to make up something like that. The overwhelming majority of people are victims. So what they're misleading is the church is going to be forced to report on anything that they hear, whereas that should be a safe place for people to go to confess anything and they that's, it's, it's breaking the seal of confession with their relationship between God. Well, first off, if something bad is happening, it's just leveling the playing field and making the clergy class a part of that. Stop making this exclusion, this loophole for yourselves, because that's disgusting. If, um, if anyone is confessing abuse, you should absolutely start an investigation and get the police involved to find out more. You shouldn't be sweeping it under the rug saying that's violating the seal of confession and making the clergy class uh, being mandated by the state. Talking about at the service of the state, I would submit that it is immoral and against God's will for people to abuse children. And I think it is the responsibility of the state to do everything it can to make sure that does not continue. I think we would be remiss in our responsibilities to accept any claim that religion and man-made religion supersedes the protections that we owe uh, children in particular. You as a human being should do what's right. The state shouldn't have to come in and say, we have to do these things because this is the right thing to do. Screw what your religion says or your relationship with God. We're talking about morality and doing what's right for the greater good of people, not for the some tradition of violating some relationship with God. And if, if you believe in God, I believe that 
God would want you to do the right thing and not continue to hide it for violating the seal of confession. If you don't believe in God, at least the Christian God, like I do, I'm, a, I'm an agnostic atheist, you should always do the right thing and you don't need a book or religion telling you to do the right thing. If something is coming up, your gut should tell you, your whole being should tell you to do something. If you look at these articles that were posted um, by the Pacific Justice Institute article, I've got that linked here, you can see here, and then here's the Catholic article by First Things, a group that I've honestly never heard of, but there were 324 comments of confused people. You see comments here. There's a lot of confused comments. We've got this comment by Michael saying, who with half a brain would think this is going to help catch any child molesters who's going to confess if they knew they would be ratted on, do such things and confess this religious. The first time I saw a therapist and they had something called informed consent, something that does not exist in churches or religion. I was blown away when I was signing this paper. I was reading it at the same time. I was like, wait a minute. If I confess that I, you know, really hurt someone or I raped or molested somebody, not that I would ever do that, you have to, by law, report that. I was totally fine with that because I don't do that behavior in the first place. It's not me. And I was okay with that because there are sick people out there that need to be ratted on. This article is such a skewed misrepresentation of it. They're saying if someone doesn't feel comfortable going into a confession or talking to a higher up in the church, uh, why would they feel safe in admitting it? Well, that's kind of on that person. That's between them and their relationship with God if they believe. Like, that's a disgusting person in the first place. There shouldn't need to be a safe place for them to confess and then keep it hidden. If that person did bad, they should fess up and say, hey, I fucked up. Everyone makes mistakes. I've made mistakes. I haven't made those kind of mistakes. In fact, those aren't mistakes. Those are on purpose, which are fostered by religions who don't let you masturbate and don't let you jack off or or have sex or have casual relationships and, and get better at dating. It just makes it so, so these people are highly confused and we have 300 people confused on this and they're blaming the Democrats saying we're stupid and California is stupid. Um, I honestly, I can't blame them for saying those things because number one is they're only being shown one side of the story. But if they were to be shown both sides and actually watch the vlog that I did last week and the full version of that where the hearing is actually called out and it clearly defines what we're going after and not just confession, it's about just doing the right thing, then I think we can get more people on our side. Barbara Anderson even released a very cool document on, on everything that happened. We confessed. Uh, the Pacific Justice Institute was, it was interesting because they're saying that pastors are being forced to become government informants if this bill passes, which is kind of true, but so does everyone else you know, that has a mandated reporting position. If you're a nurse or if you're a psychologist or a therapist or you work in, with children or around children or in schools, they have to report. So what makes, what makes the difference? We wanna put you on the same level playing field of humanity. With all of that being said, I thought it was interesting to point out these articles. I'm gonna have some more screenshots of more of how they are blatantly lying. I think it says a lot about these religions, um, these mega churches, these man-made religions. We actually, uh, the, the CCLA, the California Civil Liberties Advocacy Group, which is full of ex-JDubs and, and ex-Mormons and law students and we tried to meet with the California conference to try to come halfway and like, hey, this bill is gonna come out. Let's let's meet, let's talk. And they, they met with us initially and then they about a week later they stopped returning our phone calls and then when SB 360 came around, or in this case they sent Andrew Revis with his smirk. And that's one of the reasons why we oppose it. The new executive director for the California Catholic Conference. And I can say by sitting next to both of these gentlemen, they have no remorse and Ranger was smirking and smiling every time he made his sick disgusting points so there's something wrong with this dude based off of what I have seen and met in person. Okay so now um, I'm gonna stop the video here. The rest of the content of stuff that I can't really say here on YouTube is gonna go straight to Patreon where I break down one of the articles, the Pacific Justice Institute, which is basically the same argument that all these other articles are, are making. They're intentionally misstating the issue and you'll get to see more of that exclusively on Patreon and worse. So this is what is called, something called gunboat diplomacy. Brothers and sisters, thank you for watching. Love you guys all. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you're not on Instagram, come follow me there. I post a lot more content there. And on Patreon, more and more exclusive content like what you just watched is gonna go there. Um, and more involved commentary is gonna go on there too. So I thought I would put up this, this nice video kind of 
deprogramming their arguments and giving you all an update. Uh, SV360 is currently in suspense. It'll be about in there for about a month, which is totally normal. This happens to a lot of bills. Uh, it was flagged for fiscal, which means they were looking at how much financial impact this is gonna make on the state. So we have plans in place. We still need your support to go forward with those emails and we'll, we'll go into more detail a little bit later. Plus, uh, updates on the 2019 Memorial. That video will be coming out soon. Uh, Easter, the DNA test, and a whole bunch of other, other videos and content will be coming out soon. There's so much that's happening right now. It's crazy. I'm so excited. Um, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. How does this look? We'll see. Wait, where's the button? Oh, where's the button?